Um, yes, I just want to talk about um, something we tried out in a recent project. Um, it's a bit of an experiment really, but it was quite interesting and it proved to be useful in the end. So I'm just going to try and quickly run through um, what we were doing. Um, just to give you some background, um, CTI, we're a digital agency, so we, we tend to do a lot of Magento builds. We're not kind of just maintaining one Magento site ongoing, which I know is um, something that a lot of people do. Um, in our scenario, we, we tend to do a lot of builds and we try and um, you know, make them all um, consistently uh, high quality and uh, try and make, them, make it efficient to build them, really. So um, that's where we're coming from in terms of perspective. Um, yeah, and as I say, uh, I'm the technical director. I've um, I've worked on this project as a lead, but I'm not a Magento developer myself. Um, so it's largely the, the team who worked on the project who've um, written a lot of this stuff. But I just thought I'd talk at a high level about um, the, what the, the, the problems we were facing and why why we tried this approach. Really. Yeah, so the, it's about um, separating code and state, really, in, in the application. So um, in Magento's case, the, the code side of things is anything you can version control and get. So the, you know, the Magento core files, um, you may not want to put those in Git, but it's they are code. You know, it's something you can version control. Um, any extensions you write, whether they're pre-built ones or, um, or you know, off-the-shelf or bespoke ones, and, uh, and the theme side of things as well. I think that covers the, the code bit. Um, and the rest of it is, is state, so that this is uh, things like your you know, products, um, CMS content, also all the configuration within Magento. Um, some, a tiny bit of configuration is in the, the local XML file, which just basically tells you where the database is. Um, and the rest of the, the data and the configuration is in the database, um, which well, it, it covers all this stuff. So, you know, the, the website sets up uh, stores, attributes, products, attributes. Um, all of this is, is in the database, which makes it tricky to version control, really. Um, and I think in the, the way we, we work at CTI, we're, we're trying to deliver um, a, a Magento site that's ready to go for a client. And I think that probably the first three of those, really, we're, we're expected to kind of deliver those as part of the build. So you know, that's something we deliver. It's not just the code. So um, that's why I was interested in trying to be able to version control some of this. Um, things like the website structure, um, uh, product attributes and attribute groups, that's the sort of thing that you know, the client's paying us to try and put a site together and put this stuff together for them so it's ready to go when they launch. Um, as you get further on, it becomes, I suppose, a bit less relevant for the uh, for the build side of things, and you know, products and categories are things that the client may want to put together themselves. But um, if you're demoing a, a, a build in progress, you, you want some sample content to show them, and um, and it can be useful to be able to version control um, products and categories as well. So yeah, the the point is, you, you can't easily version control stuff in the database. So. Um, and that, why is this a problem? Well, automated testing. Um, if you're testing that your code change um, breaks something or doesn't break something, you really want the, the state of the, the application to be consistent. Um, you know, if, if the data is changing all the time and your code is changing and you run some a, a bunch of automated tests, um, you know, you, you don't know what's broken. Is it your code? Is it the data? It's a di different scenario. Um, this is also useful for, for controlling configuration within Magento from a, a central perspective. So if you have um, a site that's on a, a production server, uh, you've also got a stage environment and you've got your local development environment and all your colleagues have got their own development environment. Potentially, um, the configuration, you know, people just make a, a settings change on their local version. The client may have got bored one evening and decided to make some changes. Um, and, and things are out of alignment. It's tricky to, to know where things are up to and diagnose issues quickly. Um, and, and as I say, sample data is useful. Where, if you're doing a build and you want to kind of demonstrate as you go through to the client, this is where we're up to, uh, this is what we did in the last sprint or whatever, it's useful to have some sample products in there just to show them. So the, the solution, that, the idea that we uh, tried out um, was to try and put some of this configuration and data in, um, in files so they can be version controlled. Um, we wrote a, a bespoke extension which um, applies this configuration to, um, to the database effectively. So it allows you to um, define things like sample products, attributes um, in, in YAML files and then apply that to, uh, to the database on whichever environment you deploy to. 
Um, we also used a, a destroy and rebuild kind of approach to the development phase, which is a bit a bit odd, really. Um, but basically, we, we whenever there was a you know a commit to a, a repository or you know or we pulled something from a repository as a developer, um, we'd we'd kind of trash the whole Magento database, reinstall everything from scratch, and set up the um, run the setup scripts again to uh, run, set up those modules, uh, which meant that. You, you, you know, it took about a minute or so, but you, you meant you were a, a, a consistent point whenever someone checked code out. You knew that there was there was nothing different, you know, with their configuration to yours, and you knew that you were looking at the latest version of everything. And, and obviously, as well, um, you know, th sometimes configuration changes are part of the um, of the, the work you're doing. You're, you may need to turn a setting on, and that it should be part of the commit, and it should be stored in in uh, version control, from my point of view, anyway. Um, yeah, just to give some background to how we work, um, we, we've, we use virtual machines locally um, for development, which, which is important from, from this point of view because we, um, it allows us to have a standard tool suite um, on, on, the, on, the local, on, on each developer's local VM. So we can run scripts fairly easily and consistently. Everyone's got access to the same scripts. Um, It'll, it's, it's faster in general for getting people up to speed on, on the project. Um, we use Git for version control, and we use um, we, we deploy to the QA stage and, and the live environment generally. Maybe some more on some projects. Um, we use continuous integration as well to to automatically build to those environments and uh, and run suite of tests as well. So um, yeah, the, the extension we wrote. Um, was it's called the configurator. The, the idea is it parses a bunch of YAML files that are in um, in, the, in the Magento uh, application, and it it just kind of puts the database in line with what's in the YAML files. So during the um, the, the build process, um, every time you destroy and rebuild your environment, you start with a fresh um, Magento installation, and then. Um, these YAML files are parsed and the and configuration is set, websites are set up, attributes, that kind of thing. So it's in a consistent place. Um, th this runs as a, a setup script. Um, so when Magento is installed and all the modules uh, setup scripts run, this runs as one of those. Um, we've also got a wrapper which um, allows you to run it from the command line in case you don't want to reinstall Magento and just want to you know, apply the configuration. Um, and, and this is tied in with the, the CI process, continuous integration process, so that um, when we build to, say, the stage environment, if we, if we want to, we can say we want this to be trashed and recreated from scratch, so we, we know it's in a consistent place. Um, so this is uh, the, the structure that we've kind of come up with initially. Um, as I say, this is a, very much a work in progress. It was something we put together for one project, and we still need, needs a refactoring quite a lot. But um, we've got um, the, 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 most of the information is in this config YAML file. Um, there's also a local config YAML, which is uh, sim linked to somewhere else on the on the um, server where it resides. So that's where your environment specific stuff goes. You know, maybe it's settings that are just for the stage environment or the live environment, whatever. Um, and then there are a bunch of um, Files we put in uh, data directories, uh, sorry, a data directory which cover things like product attributes, sample products, uh, CMS pages, etc. So um, I'm just going to quickly whip through the next few slides because it, it's just give, to give you an example of uh, the, the YAML structure. And it, so th this is the, uh, the store configuration. <coughs> so it allows us to define things like the stores. Um, we can put core config uh, attributes in for each store um, at the top of the file. And then um, these are tied into the, the websites themselves. So we're making a new website for, say, U the UK. Um, and that it defines which store views relate to that website. Uh, again, you can set more configuration at the, the website level. And there's one here for, you know, there's another website for Spain which covers the two store views, um, more configuration. Um, there's also the ability to sort of inherit um, groups of configurations. So we've, in this example, there's a blue theme and a red theme group, and um, that just changes the package name. But then, when when it comes to defining the websites, you can say the UK site is going to inherit the red theme, and in this case, um, PayPal. That may be a bunch of configuration settings as well that are grouped together. Uh, product attributes, it's, it's handy for this, because um, again, product attributes, if you're maintaining a, a Magento site for a client, attributes is something that potentially is your responsibility. You know, it's, um, they may, you, you may want to add a few attributes in for a requirement they've come up with, and um, being able to define it in this YAML file just means that you know, it can be deployed to different environments fairly easily. Um, 
yeah, as I pointed out, some of the core config data uh, properties can be set um, as part of the website structure. So where they are in that structure determines the scope if they're at the top of the YAML file. Um, they'll be global, um, and if they are um, you know, nested within a website, then they'll be at the website level or so on. Uh, again, you can define products and categories in this way. Um, we, we've kind of added all this stuff in as we went, just by, you know, one day we think we, we need to be able to make sample products, so we added this stuff in. So it's, as I say, it's just organically grown in this way. But, um, and shipping rates is another one, so we can now, you know, store the shipping rate data in a, a CSV file in this, this case and apply that to whichever environment. And finally, the CMS pages, the same principle, you know, you can define. Um, pages, uh, define the title, um, and the content of the page goes in a separate file so it's easy to, uh, to access and edit. Yeah, so the, this approach of um, destroying and rebuilding each time, um, we use uh, fabric scripts on the, on the local VM so that you, you type fab rebuild and it does the whole process. It destroys the database, it reinstalls Magento, and it runs the setup scripts, um, one of which is the configurator which puts all your attributes and things back in. Um, it, it tends to get run, you know, you, you can run it as a test before you push code to the repository to make sure that when other developers check this out, it's going to work. And it, as a developer, if you pull this, this code, you can run the, uh, run the same process to, to bring yourself in line with the configuration in the repository. It doesn't take too long, maybe 30 seconds to a minute, as long as you don't go crazy with the number of uh, websites. Um, and this, uh, it, it also um, is applicable you know, once the website's been launched and you're supporting it, um, we don't obviously we don't destroy the website whenever we deploy to the live environment. But we, we still use the, the functionality which can uh, you know change configuration, create attributes. So we turn some of it off. Things like the sample products obviously don't get created on the live environment, but we can still um, toggle uh, options on and off, and uh, attributes uh, can be changed. Things like that. So in, in practice, it's worked well. Um, it means we can start projects with a standard configuration set. Um, it it kind of ties in as well with the requirements capture process. So if you're going through with the client and thinking, you know, what, what attributes do we need? Um, what, what, how do you want the websites to be set up, the store structure, languages, that kind of thing? Um, it almost maps directly to the YAML structure, so it prompts you to, to almost complete this early in the process. Um, yeah, it eliminates uh, problems where you know one, one developer's got one set of data and you've got a different set and you're trying to figure out where, where the issue lies. Um, it gives you a standard base for automated testing. So I know with things like Beehat you can set up fixtures um, as a starting point, but this, this kind of gives you a bit more, um, it gives you the option of just creating products uh, through this script if you want to um, as a starting point for the test suite. Um, it's great for sample data for demoing things to the client. and. Um, it's also, you know, once the site's gone live, it's a consistent way of saying, um, you know, we, we've added some new attributes and let's deploy this to live and we know it's going to work in a consistent way. Um, so the, the next steps really, we're going to clean this up, uh, refactor it a bit and um, test it with Community Edition of Magento. It's been written with Enterprise at the moment. Um, and, and we'll pop it on GitHub somewhere um, in case someone finds it useful. And then as, you know, as we do all the projects in future, we'll probably add things to this and, and try and refine it a bit. Um, yeah, and that's the end. Patrick, got time for a couple of questions if anyone's got any. If you were to write a new module for your part of your production, that won't that won't take that in as well, will it? It'll just be the standalone base and you'll still have to load your module in over the top. Yeah, well, that right. well, when the um, as part of the setup process, when we deploy to an environment, it will um, run the setup scripts for each module. So, yeah, effectively, any, any modules you've installed code-wise, as long as there's a, a setup script, you know, data setup, or whatever, it'll run those uh, after it's installed Magento. Great, thanks, great. So, the the, the how much of this stuff is uh, freely available online for us to use? 
Well, uh, at the moment, none. <laughs> but, um, so my second question is, when will it be? Oh, it, well, it, I don't know. As soon as we can uh, refactor it and put it into GitHub, really, there's, there's no. I mean, we're, we're pretty much at the end of the project. I cool. Think. Yeah. I mean, so I, um, yeah, we, we've got a bit of time now to kind of refactor this out and, and uh, make it available. Cool. I don't work for a living anymore, but um, but this right? this this would have come in very handy. I was thinking of about 100 projects that that would have been really nice to have. So very cool. Good work, guys. Thanks. Not a question as such, just uh, push it today and we'll all help you refactor it. Oh, right, okay, brilliant. <laughs>